Hello and welcome to Tights TV. I've got a very, very special guest on today uh, and a lot of fans should know him because he was part of the promotion winning side to get the promised land at Premier League. I give you, ladies and gentlemen, it's Nicola, Nicholas Eden, or Nicky Eden as we all know him as. Thanks for joining for Nicky. I appreciate no, it, mate. Yeah. Uh, what I want to do, uh, just for all the fans out there, is just to get a bit of an insight into one of the legends at club, uh, Nicky Eden. Uh, and first question is like I'd like to ask you, Nicky, is did you always want to become a footballer? Yeah, as a kid growing up, you know, you constantly playing football. You know, you you know, most of the time you never thought it'd happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but you just sort of kept going and stuck at it. You know, went worked your way through the um you know, schoolboy schoolboy teams. Um, you know, and eventually got the links. Uh, I think I was fourteen when I Signed schoolboy farms for Barnsley. Right, right. Uh, what Barnsley only team that you were going to play for, or were the others interested at the same time, uh, Nicky? Um, I, I mean, back then it was basically unless you were like really outstanding in your age group, you you generally just signed for your local club. Mm. Um, so say you came came through Barnsley schoolboys under fourteens and fifteens, uh, signed schoolboy forms at fourteen for for Barnsley. Um, and then just, I say, you get you get invited down, for, you know, during school holidays for training and, and things like that. And then it got to the point where, um, you know, when you, when you were leaving school, it was uh, the apprent the old apprenticeship scheme had just finished, and uh, they started up with the YTS. Yeah. While you were at club, um, obviously, like I say, you joined at fourteen and that. Oh, what biggest influence in your career that while you were at Barnsley? Oh, Eric. Uh, you know, Eric Winstanley. Yeah. yeah, I mean, not, not, not at the very start. Cause Eric was with the first team then. Mm. Um, you know, but, you know, once you got, I think I was, because I didn't get offered a YTS, um, so I stayed on it at, at sixth form, um, and then, you know, kept going down and training and playing for youth team. And that first year was a bit of a struggle. Mm. Um, and then I think Mel Machin came in and Eric got moved down from first team to youth team, um, so I'll have been 17 um, and then we just, you know, I think this season Eric were in charge, we won, we won old Northern Intermediate League two years running, um, but I don't know, it was just something, I think Eric's way of coaching uh, just clicked with me, mm. uh, you know, and I, I just, I went from being probably, <clears throat> I don't know, I don't know what I said, not best player because I weren't, I weren't the best player. You know, you were sort of like fifth or sixth in line. You know, there were lads who were quicker than me, bigger than me. Um, you know, but I just sort of gradually worked my way up. I know Eric Win Stanley well because he, obviously he had a, a little corner shop, well, a little off license shop in Mont Breton where I'm uh, currently living now, Mont Breton Barnsley. Yeah. So Eric, like you said, Via, he was very much a, a very proud man, a very you know proper Yorkshire man. We he said it how it was. But he also got, you know, words of comfort and all. That's what I remember as Eric as well. Yeah, he just, you know, it, it was it was tough, Eric. You yeah. know, you didn't, didn't get many words of comfort. Um, <laughs> you know, but he just drove you on. Um, but I don't know. I can only speak from my, my own personal experience with Eric that, you know, because I felt I was improving, you know, all the time, and I was taking information on, and you know, I mean. Basically, you were doing what Eric told you to do and it got mm -hmm. your results. So you kind of stuck with it. Um, you know, so even when, you know, you were making your run around lakes again, uh, you know, on a 12 minute run, um, and, you know, he felt like your legs were hanging off and your chest were going to explode. Mm -hmm. you, you knew it was for your own good and you knew it was making you better. Do you remember making your first debut, your first start as a bouncer player? What did that stick in your memory? Um, well, it, I was, I'd, I'd signed pro by then, and I think I was coming towards the end of my second year pro, and I'd, all, I'd been given a free transfer by Mel Machin, mm. um, but I think that was in about the March. So, like, you know, trying to scramble around, find another club, you know, like old Division 4 clubs and things like that. Uh, but I got put in the squad for Brentford away, and it was the second-to-last game, and I got thrown on at half-time. Um, am I allowed to swear on here or not? Yeah, of course you are, yeah. Um, I got the uh, the inspirational words of like, 
go on, see if you can do any fucking better. I think it takes Charlie Bishop off and throw throw me on. <laughs> and I just went out and enjoyed myself. I think, yeah, we got beat. I think three one or three two down at Brentford. Um, uh, but then following week we got last game of the season. We were playing Swindon. Um, I think they'd already been promoted. You know, Glenn Oddle was in charge. They mm-hmm. got that team playing sweeper system with wing backs. Um, so that was my home debut, and I had the job of marking Glenn Oddle. Um, and I've never seen as many crimes. Not a bad job. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad tester for you, my mother. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, ironically, he was like growing up, he was one of my heroes. He remember Brian Robson because I was, I was a midfielder at that at that point. Um, mm. But a real real buzz for me to play against him. And obviously, that was back in '93 season. I think it was ended '93 season, '92 '93 season. Yeah. So a couple of seasons on. You, you, you more or less established your Senate Barnsley side and we were jumping through to 96, 97. What a, what a season that was for to uh, push on for Premier. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm sure uh, before the season started, we were one of the teams tipped, tipped to not maybe not for relegation, but definitely to be down at the bottom. Mm. Um, you know, we, we were an unknown quantity, you know, we got quite a few young lads in the team and I think obviously when you're a young lad coming through you've got no reputation so I think other teams look at you and just think ah oh, he's just a kid coming through you know than myself uh, Dave Watson uh, Andy Liddell uh, Aidy Moses were in the squad at that time you got Scott Jones involved um, I haven't missed anybody like I mean little Martin Bullock didn't come through the ranks but we signed him as a, a you know as a young player from, uh, from non-league mm. so we've got a good core you know then we've got Lads, probably like Yovo and Clint Marcello, who again were unknown quantities. Yeah. Um, and then I think one of the biggest things Danny did were bring in, uh, you know, he'd already got Red as, as the experienced one, and he added Tomo and Paul Wilkinson to that. Um, you know, we, we set off the season, I think, won, won the first five, you know, and took everybody by surprise, you know, but then for the rest of the season, you'd be kind of like, yeah, they'll, they'll blow up soon. You know, yeah. they, haven't, they haven't got the strength in depth, they haven't got the players. Um, I know one thing that kicked us on was then when we went and signed John Hendry. So we had a real good, like, front partnership then. And again, it were, you know, just a good team with, you know, a good sprinkler experience and youth together. Yeah, as a fan, I mean, I've, you know, been since like 89 and uh, watching and stuff like that and i remember being in old brewery stand but obviously it all changed ground and that season it was absolutely unbelievable because it seemed to be like you said be a good mixture of youth and experience and with danny we right on right on uh, his man eric winstanley and all it was it were a good combination via and his fans i mean i i, I still can go back to the day last game at season bradford uh clint marcel and it, oh jesus christ it was like a carnival atmosphere you know what I mean? It was so town it's semi buzzing. I don't think it slept for a, a good twenty four hours after. Yeah, I mean obviously being a Barnes lad as well, you know, mm. knew a lot of fans, you know, you'd either grown up with him, gone to school with him, you know, knew one from we around town. Um <laughs> you know, so it was like extra extra special for me. Yeah. Well, uh, when you were obviously you played away games and stuff like that, did you have a regular a buddy, a regular teammate who you always partnered up with, or were it a varied mixture through your career? No, me and, me and Lids always used to run together. Um, mm. Obviously, we'd, we'd sort of broke through at similar time playing at your team together. Um, we got on really well with Lids, uh, similar sense of humour and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, we, always, always me and Lids. Uh, but, but whilst you were at Barnsley, uh, I mean, it'd probably be a bit of an hard question, but what, what most memorable game you've played and what meant something more to you? You're, you're really 
Yeah, uh, sorry, Nicky. Uh, well, uh, whilst you were at Barnsley, what what most memorable game you ever played oh, yeah. in? Uh, what meant something for you? Um, I mean, there was, obviously Bradford won. Um, mm. You know, because that was like the sort of prize at the end of a long, long hard season. Um, yeah. Another game in that season were you know, Sheffield United at home. I think that was in about February, March, and we were both obviously up there, and we beat them two 0 nil. Um, you know, that were on Sky, in front of Sky cameras. Um, you know, and I think I got I got man at a match and set one up and scored winner. Um, I mean, there were a lot a lot of ones in in Prem. Obviously, you know, a bit fan will remember them all playing against. Mm. I mean, I didn't enjoy too many at Prem games, um, you know, because they were so tough. You know, you're up against top top players. Yeah. yeah, class players and stuff like that. So it's going to be a a test of fire as a player. Just as we know. Uh, um, you know, we had, we had some that season. Uh, in Europe, after the defeat, five seven. Um, but uh, um, we're coming to light, obviously. Latter stage of your career at Barnsley before you moved on, I think it was to Birmingham. Um, you led us out at Wembley, uh, 2000. What it is, it right? What I've read that you were carrying an injury at the time when you, when you led us out, is, is that right, Nicky? Yeah, I'd, um, I think we'd, we'd beat Birmingham in, in semis, uh, and then I think about a couple of days later. Uh, you know, I just broke up a bit just to end there where you were on a bat with to uh, Birmingham game. I sort of begged it. Um, it's which has got. Uh, but it's a team first season. Uh, so, yeah, we're sort of beating all the well, not stat game, but, um, you know, I've stuck, I can give you half an hour. So I eventually got thrown on. And I think me and Jeff Thomas gone. Uh, but, yeah, just obviously disappointed not to. Um, not, not to win the game because I'd I, I would have stayed at Barnsley then if we'd have you know if we'd have gone up again you know I'd sort of got mm. that agreement with with Harry already um, you know, I'd agreed a new contract uh, based on the fact you know cause it was two different amounts you know if it, one amount if we we're in Premier League and one amount in Championship yeah um, you know but you know, game and. You know, and then, and so after that, then obviously you got to think about your your, your career in long term and and stuff like that. Uh, when you went to Birmingham, what it um. Was it an happy time at Birmingham, or you know, what it uh, did it bring good uh, results and good performances? Yeah, for I, mean, uh, I mean, first season I was there, I think I played like nearly sixty games. You know, we had a we ended up we got to Worthington Cup final, 
Um, you know, we got beat on penalties by Liverpool, but, you know, sort of gave a real good account of ourselves on the day. Um, got to playoffs, got beaten in the semis on pens. Um, and in the second season, we didn't have a great start. And I think uh, Trevor Francis got sacked just before Christmas and Steve Bruce came in. Uh, it was straight away to field players in. Self out the team. Found out that Bruce wanted me to. I'll just feel. I didn't really. And Bruce got the other against me. It's not a quick defense. Again. Um, I didn't really feel part of the way mm. and signed a you know, I'm a, you know, easy then, but yeah, you know, I still wouldn't have played. Um, and I said I just wanted to play. So I think um, Wigan came in for me on loan in about the September. Uh, so I went up there for a month. So obviously we were play, uh, playing to a, a few teams and stuff like that. Did you ever feel like you were going to go into coaching? Uh, I know that you, you went to Rotherham, you went to a, um, a join down the Lidl and stuff. Did you think you were ever going to go coaching or were you going to go towards like a media commentator kind of thing? I don't think you comment here. Um, I've always been um, like, you know, coaching if you like. Um, um, you know, about, you know, why we would doing. Uh, got to almost be a coach on the training pitch in when you were playing because you'd be, you know, you sort of be telling the players what you wanted from them and what you needed and, you know, why you were playing that sort of ass and why you were there. Um, you know, so I think we about to start uh, with a license by then. Uh, um, and then obviously I've tried to get in with. My career, I've been licensed. I know that you're currently in Jamaica at minute, um, and you, you're coaching in uh, in Jamaica. Would you ever like to come back to Barnsley? Do you ever see coming back to Barnsley in any kind of coaching role, or are you happy with what you uh, you're doing now at, at Minute Nicky? Um, I've lost, I've lost count a number of times to get back to Barnsley on uh, various managers, staff. Um, I think I killed myself a little bit um, when I was very new to Twitter. I think it was at the time I like Patrick Crown and Ben Mansford. Um, and I thought everybody like might have a similar sort of sense of so myself. Put some sarcastic comment you know, no. said that Barnsley, while certain people were at the club. I think I presume that's still the case now, but you know, as I say, I've tried to get numerous times, you know, it's sort of be like, well, it would be coming up from time meant to be. So, you know, um, uh, I'd, I'd dropped out of the coach, uh, you know, I'd kind of had enough for it, needed a, just felt like, you know, I needed a break from it um mm. you know the the 
Okay. Yeah. Much more, you're more with it too much that. Um, you know, I've, I've been for certain jobs at certain places where um, they literally tell you that they're not that concerned about your coaching ability on the grass. It's uh, what your presenting skills are like, um, what all your stuff like surrounding it away from mm. the pitch, which is kind of alien to me because because I've spent so much time on the as a player and coach. That's where that's where you feel at home. Um, but I mean, one thing I will say is that you know, since the academy, you know, I've been around since the academies were first set up. You know, it's not mm. just the academies, but uh, emotional just uh, made themselves in value. Needs to be some good stuff. It, but um, it seems to be uh, um, an important when to me important time you know all the other stuff's there to support that but I, I kind of guess like the, the stuff that I'm good at is um, I don't know mm -hmm. as much uh, seeing as important. I've kind of become a little illusion with, uh, with the coaching and the, and the way it's gone mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, but well, I've got a, a little picture I'm going to show here. Um, don't know if you really remember this. Uh, let's have a look, see if I can get it up. This was, I think it was a commemorative game, and uh, mascot in front of you back then was my son Luke. Uh, and I think it was, I think the guest referee was like Howard Webb. I think it was like a promote, it got all together the Barnes of Legends at the time. Um, so it was like, uh, you know, like a bit of an honour for, uh, it was like an all-star supporters kind of thing against the, just lost Nicky here for a minute, but uh, yeah, that was uh, Nicky Eden. Uh, I'm going to get in contact with Nicky Eden again. Uh, apologies for a bit of mix up with sound and quality, but he is in Jamaica, internet issues, but it's just something that I wanted to do. Uh, see if I can get Nicky. He's coming back. He just yeah, he's back, Nicky. Yeah. So I'm just uh, yeah, I'm just saying to people out there that that was like a commemorative game between Barnes, some of Barnes of Legends and that, and um, like I think we're like an all star kind of thing. We I would web what referee, um, and my son were like in front there as a as a mascot kind of thing. So that's. That's going back a fair few years because I think oh, Beard is yeah. only about nine yeah. year old. So yeah, I just want to take. Uh, I would. I want to thank you, Nikki. I, I really, really appreciate it, mate, for joining me. And it's it's nice to have an insight on you know how your career started and what happened. Uh, so it's somewhat different. I hope all Barnes of fans, please leave your likes and comments and a massive respect to Nikki because he took his time out in a busy, busy schedule, uh, and it's not. Easy for lad when he's got uh, work commitments to do. So, Nikki, from behalf of me and all Barnes fans out there, I just want to say thank you for joining me, mate. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Cheers, I appreciate it. Thank you.